वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू द एबडोम एबडोम यू नो इट्स द लोअर पोर्शन ऑफ द ट्रंक बिलो टू दिस डायफ्राम द दिस एबडोम ऑन द सर्फेस वॉट इट अपीयर्स इज लाइक बिलो टू दिस पोस्टल मार्च एंड अब द आई लिक क्रिस्ट एंड क्लीट्स दिनिमेंट्स and behind between the 12th rib and the pile of crest those are the loins in the behind and here the cycling we call it as flanks and anteriorly it enters on the wall which you call it as belly when it become pendulous so this abdomen is much larger in size than what it appears from outside because inside you know this dome of the diaphragm it is called rex superiorly so much of the abdominal viscera it encroaches inside in the thoracic cavity your liver your stomach your spleen all of it goes and pushes inside into the thoracic cavity similarly now you know this iliac crest and inguinal ligament which what appears superficially on the surface but the viscera you know the loops in this intestine then you have cecum colon sigmoid colon rectum then you have this uterus Fallopian tubes, ovaries, blood—all this is the normal vessel which reaches into the pelvis. And down below we have is the perineum. So it is much bigger in size than it what appears from outside. Then, for this convenience, we actually divide this abdominal cavity for the purpose of study into three groups. One is the abdomen proper. Now, abdomen proper is severely limited by this diaphragm, and below it is limited up to the pelvic inlet. Pelvic inlet, right? That is the bony brim of the true pelvis. So, up till there it is abdomen proper, and below to this pelvic brim or the pelvic inlet, that's the true pelvis, and that we study as a portion separately. That's called the pelvis, and you study separately the contents of it. that includes the uterus fallopian tubes and vagina then you have bladder and rectum menal canal spinal vesicles prostate all of them. then now below there is another membrane that's urogenital membrane and below to that is the perine you know that includes the external genitalium portion of the canal and sphincter will be studied separately in the topic perine now focusing upon the abdomen proper this abdomen proper has an enormous tendency to expand in size you know that you don't have any bony protection here neither in the neck these are the two sides ventrally you don't have any bony protection otherwise in the face in the chest and in the pelvic region you do have bony protection and you don't have any bony protection the advantage you get is that you can easily flex your spine at these two regions in the cervical and in the lumbar region you can easily you have like a normal uh, routine regular life you find that you flexing your spine especially at these two regions in the cervical and in the lumbar region because you have nothing to prevent that flexion and another thing that you get from this and that's why I remember that uh, this abdomen is also prone for blunt trauma Closets, nothing protecting from the front. Then, this abdomen has an enormous capacity to expand in size. Remember the four F F for fat. In case of additional fat deposition, especially the fat gets deposited at a plane below to the umbilicus, and more of fat is deposited in males in the anterior abdominal wall. so that makes it as a pendulous belly right and in such cases even the umbilicus shifts downwards than its normal level that's a pendulous abdomen then you have this f for fetus right so in case of the last trimester of pregnancy fetus you know a pregnant gravid female you find that there's a bul- you know bulging here anteriorly and that's one more reason and because of that stretching abdominal wall remember there is streaks the epidermis actually when there is a normal sudden increase in stretching of the skin there is 
breach in the epidermis and there is loss of pigmentation at those stretch marks and those are called the stretch marks of pregnancy or you call them as trya gravidarum similarly now f for fluid there is conditions like ascites nephrotic syndrome there is enough amount of fluid collected in this peritoneal cavity and with that there is bulging of the abdomen not only anteriorly but even you know this fullness of the flaps in sides then get f for flatulence just to make you the list of f f f f flatulence means gases abdomen right so remember these four f with which you find there is you know stretching of the anterior abdomen study of abdomen is very much important for a surgeon for a gynecologist for an obstetrician for a physician because you know without inspecting without examining without palpation percussion and auscultation you know you cannot reach to a clear cut diagnosis if in case there is a uh, you know in there is unlocalized pain and if there is some lump which is not clear which is not if there is a lump in abdomen or might be some any other cause of pain in abdomen this procedure examination has to be followed by a physician by a surgeon by a gynecologist so and you know patient also feels much comforted like you know if you don't you know if you don't palpate you don't you not examine the abdomen patient also at times feels unsatisfied you know so examination of abdomen is really very important in your clinical practice and even if not you know it's an enigma for a surgeon like you know sometimes there is not a clear cut diagnosis made just by examination so you need to do more investigations you be at the that's an x-ray for the kidney uretic bladder pyrography right ultrasonography ct mri all different methods of investigations to find the underlying cause and even if yet not a proper diagnosis is meant there is one more thing that's called laparotomy that is cutting and opening up of the abdominal wall to find out the in zero inside to visualize the structures in situ and that is called the laparotomy so i hope you understood and you know with the course of evolution some evolutionary point also let me tell you that um, with the course of evolution you all know we derive from the quadrupeds and in the quadrupeds this belly the ventral portion of the abdomen was suspended down towards the gravity and that's why this animals they have this belt the vertical belt here that's rectus abdominis that's well developed in quadrupeds because that supports the belly from against the gravity and now in humans you know there are a lot of modifications which have taken place to you know for this adoption of this erect posture one thing is your pelvic diaphragm which is descending down if you compare a pelvic diaphragm to a quadruped you will find that in us in humans this pelvic diaphragm has descended down during the course of evolution and that's because of this weight of the viscera suspended or resting on the pelvic floor so those were some important points and one more point is like being you know the lumbar lordosis these are the two regions in the cervical and the lumbar spine these are the two regions where the spine is convex anteriorly right so your center of gravity actually there's already a lecture uploaded on the line of center gravity and center of mass so you can go and study the details about this line of gravity and center of mass in human body right now let me tell you that center of grip, mass in a human body lies you know it's a concentration of the mass with the point at the point at a point where the whole mass of this human body is centralized that is called the 
center of gravity in a human body and that lies just in front of the S2 vertebra. So that means our line of center of gravity, center of mass is within the pelvis. But that is like when you are standing here and you are a normal healthy human being. But as I told you there are various conditions where this abdomen bulges out. Let's talk about the last trimester of the pregnancies. So because of additional weight here, the center of gravity even shifts anterior. So the lady, the female has to curve or extend the lumbar spine even more. So as to bring back the center of gravity within the line of gravity which should pass between the feet. Right? So this also has to be understood and even you must have seen like people who are heavily obese, heavily obese. They even walk with their, you know, they even stand with like this. Why? Because their center of gravity, if they stand straight, the center of gravity will try, you know, uh, they will, the center of gravity will be outside the feet. The line of center of gravity will shift outside the feet. So they have to stand like this. Got it? So these are the few important facts which were relevant to this introduction to abdomen, right?